What's wrong? Nothing. Sorry. National Lampoon's Loaded Weapon 1. From out of the night comes two men with enough courage. <laughs> Enough brains. What you got, Irv? Dandruff, seborrhea, maybe just dry, itchy scale. Have you tried this? I use it. Head and shoulders? Enough bullets. I know what you're thinking, punk. Did he fire 173 times or 174? To get the job done. Hey, Scotty! Can you get this machine to work? I'm giving her all she's got, Captain. If I push it any harder, the whole thing will blow. New Line Cinema presents the cop movie to end all cop movies. Give me a name. Are your parents supposed to do that? Hey, hey, Sarge. It's tingling. That means it's working. Do you sleep in the nude? Only when I'm naked. They now never to screw with me. Wilderness girls. It's just a big checkout. Come on, level with me. It's not bad. You'll be fine. You'll be back on your feet in no time. National Lampoon's Loaded Weapon 1. So, this is Mr. Screw with your brain, eat your spleen, wear your flesh as a hairnet leecher, huh? Ah! Look who's Mr. Scaredy Pants now. Ah! I just gotta ask, what does human flesh taste like? Chicken. See it before they make the sequel. Hey! hey! Welcome to Movie Hoppers, I'm Bob Sham. I'm Angela. All the weird noises you hear are dogs. Welcome. We finally, uh, we're in the last week of, of April. April. Yes, yes, we are. And we're getting, only now getting to our second of what is, uh, I attempted to be our theme of the month called Awkward Laughter, where the spoofy movies, the farcical movies, we already talked about the Naked Gun last week. Mm -hmm. This week, we talk about one that I watched a lot as a kid. And I was so curious as to see if it would hold up. Yeah. Because this isn't a movie that gets talked about very much, but it's in the vein of the Naked Gun and the classic Mel Brooks. It's going to be funny because Mel Brooks pretty much popped all these off, but we may not, not have time. <laughs> we'll get to Mel Brooks in the future. I think it'll happen. Yeah. You know. He crosses genres. I mean, we're going to attempt uh, our monthly theme one more time with next week's Hey Man, Don't Be So Dramatic, where we discuss the movies of Michael Mann. Yes. So we're going to try one more time with this monthly theme. So I don't, if, you, if we can get four, right? We'll consider it successful. I think we did get four on Animation Overdose. We could do another one. This We have five more days in this month. It is possible. Do you have any ideas of what you'd want to watch? Hot Shots. Yeah, I figure Hot Shots would come up. Yeah. Always role models, but we seem to be on like a theme, and I feel like this has gone from just like comedies to like slapstick comedies. So it feels I, like I feel like hot shots. Look, we uh, role models the movie starring Paul Rudd and that who was that guy? He was in movies for a bit, and we haven't seen him in a bit. Sean something. Yep. Um, <laughs> we love that movie. So I've been resisting. Because that might end up end up being one of the highest scoring movies we got. Be. I feel like Role Models is one of like the most underrated comedies so of good. all time. Like it's just very funny. We'll get there eventually. But it's not farcical like we've been talking no, about. No, but I think Hot Shots and and it's interesting that you say this is the one that you watched the most because Hot Shots was the one that I watched the most. Yeah. I I remember Hot Shots. I, watched, I didn't remember this. I recognized bits of it. I watched Hot sure. Shots quite a bit too. And the Naked Gun two and a half had come out around this time. Yeah. So that was I just love these movies. And Hot the, Shots Part Two. Yeah. I uh. It's funny because I also had a big crush on Emilio Estevez and Charlie Sheen when I was younger. There's a movie about Heidi, uh, 
it, I think it's a movie called Heidi, but it's set in like the Swiss Alps. But like Charlie Sheen is in it, and I was obsessed with it when I was a kid. I should try to find it and see what it's. Called. I mean, I know what Heidi. I know about Heidi, but Charlie Sheen was in a Heidi movie. It's like a more grown up Heidi movie. I'd have to try to find it. I'll find it and yeah. show you what I'm talking about. Okay. But I was obsessed with him a little bit. So like this was right in my alley. Also, I I didn't remember Loaded Weapon. But I did definitely grow up on the movies that that was based on. We watched so yeah, this much is our Lethal childhood. Weapon, so much Die Hard, so many Basic Instinct, Chasing Basic Instinct. Wayne's I wasn't World. allowed to see when I was very small, but Wayne's World. I think what I've discovered revisiting these kind of movies, that I literally haven't seen these types of movies in decades. True. Is that I kind of like them. I, I think these are kind of the movies that I've... I think everyone who loves movies has this particular type that they know maybe isn't for everyone yeah. or isn't that great, but they overrate it in their mind. And I think movies like this might be it for me. Yeah. I think so. Now, you were a little more critical on um, Naked, Gun. Naked Gun than yeah. I was. and yeah. but, I, but some of your com- complaints was that the jokes kind of lingered a little bit. And I complained a little bit about like the weird facial reactions that... Uh, that certain it didn't happen throughout the Naked Gun, but what happened with characters who didn't seem to be in on the goof world of Frank yeah. Drebin. Yeah. But in this movie, Loaded Weapon, National Lampoon's Loaded Weapon we One, were serious. Everybody, everything was played so straight. I loved it. And it was like joke after joke after joke after joke. But n- nobody's breaking. But there were a styles of jokes here that I did think fell flat, that kind of balanced mm. out that I think the way Naked Gun did. There was a lot of references of the time yes. that you just mentioned, all the movies that had been coming out within the span of like a half a decade leading up to this movie. And there's also references to commercials at the time. Commercials, there's a reference to Hot Shots in yes. Loaded Weapon. Yes, which was actually very funny. It was so funny because it was like, hey, you're here and like your brother because he's un- he's he's cutting a bomb and John Lovitz is there. He's this character that keeps John dying Lovitz and coming. He's really funny in he's this movie. The, he's the uh, Joe Pesci character, right? Yeah, I keep yeah. forgetting that it's supposed yeah. to be like that. Yeah, but but he's Amelia Esvez is trying to cut a bomb, and John Lovitz is behind him, being like, "Yeah, this is like that. This is like Hot Shots. This is like that." Like the other thing. Yeah. This like in Hot Shots, <laughs> which is very funny. Yes. Um, Charlie Sheen is in this movie. So many cameos. There's a movie. lot of... Bruce Willis makes a cameo. Yeah. He was a big fucking star at this time. <laughs> he was. And he showed up for and like a gag. Fun of his stuff. The Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. As soon as they showed... Were in this movie. A shot of the great... I literally said Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. And it's... And I forgot... I couldn't believe it. Most of this movie I'd forgotten, even though I watched it as a kid. But I forgot the Ninja Turtles. Uh, We're talking the 89 costumed uh, one. Probably, like, the most well-regarded Ninja Turtles movie. Yeah. After all these years, honestly. Because it was just so well done in the costume. And like yes. that, when I was a kid, when that Ninja Turtles movie came out, I lost my shit. I, was, I lost my fucking mind. It was great. Nothing was more important in this world than me going to see that movie at that time. <laughs> uh, that and Batman were just massive. Yeah. But the things that I felt like fell flat were just the idea of like, like the head and shoulders joke. Yes. It's really just saying what the commercial said. It wasn't really like. Some jokes were just like, remember when this thing happened over here? And it wasn't really like making a really structured joke. It was just like acknowledging that other things exist in pop culture. Mm -hmm. Like the worst joke was at the end of the movie when they do the Wayne's World Bohemian Rhapsody in the car thing. And it was kind of, they, I mean, it was funny as far as like who was in the car and who was doing it. Mm-hmm. But like just doing that wasn't very funny. No. And we ended the movie on that gag. But then there's other things like, like there's obviously Lethal Weapon, which I've never even watched a full Lethal Weapon movie. I've never watched My a dad full would Lethal be so Weapon. So disappointed movie. in you. And the basic instinct gag was actually pretty funny because. When Kathy Ireland spins around, she literally turns into a beaver, which I thought yeah. was funny. Also, Kathy Ireland, they they made fun of that classic homely girl takes off her glasses and pulls her hair down is gorgeous all of a sudden. Yeah. 
Um, as though the woman with the glasses was like ugly or something. No, she was, and they could have, they already had chemistry. Yeah. But then all of a sudden it was Kathy Ireland, and he's like, "You should always wear your hair down." Yeah, yeah. And that was a little much, but also like that was something that we saw time after time after time in the '90s. Was like you were a different person if you took your hair down. And then there was a Silence of the Lamb spoof, which in the '90s there were no <laughs> less there were no less than five thousand fucking spoofs of silence yeah. of the lambs yeah so uh but other than that i felt like every joke was really funny i know in lethal weapon he loses a girl yeah uh to a suicide or a murder or something yeah. and, in the, and emilio Estevez is, is essentially mel gibson's character in yeah. that but like the girl that he's missed is claire which is his dog yeah which so, is great and you don't find for a little bit which is wonderful we find out fairly quickly pretty quickly by the time he's at his home not until he looks at the photo he's already been crying about her that's that's really early in the movie though because you have to know it's a dog to understand the gag in which he's talking about like Mm -hmm. because he doesn't clarify it's a dog to anyone else so when he's like yeah you know claire she'd get real excited and pee on my leg and everyone's like what like what kind of lady is this right yeah so that was pretty funny yeah it's funny it's a funny movie. Um, oh, uh, Whoopi Goldberg. <laughs> right. She plays the person who gets killed. Tim Curry's in this movie. Tim Curry. William Shatner Fucking is the William villain. William Shatner. Who else? It's like uh, so many cameos all over this thing. Oh, Joyce Brothers? Uh, yeah. Um, is like the forensic. <laughs> Phil Hartman. <laughs> Phil Hartman, rest in peace. Yeah. Corey Feldman shows up in this movie. Mm-hmm. Yeah, there really is so much, like, Hollywood was really backing this movie up. Yeah. And while we enjoyed it, it's not a movie that gets talked about very much. No, not at, at all. all. Uh, a National Lampoon movie, which have always been very up and down. And I can understand if people watch this and was like, this movie was fucking stupid. Uh, I wouldn't go that far. No, I think I it was, it was actually, we had a lot of fun yeah. watching it. You know, how... how how bit, how high a score do you think this got on Rotten Tomatoes? Rotten Tomatoes? Yeah. How how what Rotten Tomatoes store, score do you think this? Sixty three. Eighteen percent. What? <laughs> the consensus what? is that this movie is awful. Well, who's reviewing this? Is it like babies who were born in the nineties? You got the audience review, and then you got the critics review, and the critics review are from the time. Okay. Yeah. 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 Well, was Rotten Tomatoes a thing in the nineties? No, it wasn't. But that's like, what I'm saying. This is like after going back but they don't burn the new york times movie review articles after they're done like you can still count that into rotten tomatoes the critic reviews and the audience reviews that's what rotten tomatoes is and you combine them for Mm -hmm. the overall tomato score so the critics that do the publications and the shows your siskel and ebert who's putting that into rotten tomatoes it's how just, does that work? Well, who's putting anything onto their websites that you aggregates had to go any onto information? Rotten Tomatoes and judge it there, and then it counted up your stuff. I didn't know they like went into historical like newspaper ratings to add that to Rotten Tomatoes. Well, you can go back and understand and see what people thought of a movie. Sure. I mean, I guess it's accessible. Whoever would do that, right? There's always links to articles and there's archives, of course. Yeah. How did this do at the theater? Do you know? According to Wikipedia. Everybody just wore their own clothes, right? The budget was eight point two million. Okay. The box office was fifty one million. Okay. Box office that's a huge is always success. off actually fifty one million is kinda low but for a, the kind of movies that were popping off at the time. One hundred, but if you spend eight million and you get fifty one million, that's oh, success. They were happy about it. Yeah, no doubt. Yeah. No doubt. There was a part where Samuel L they, they parked a car on a curb. I love and that. Samuel L. L. Jackson gets out of the car, and he slips. <laughs> it's not played for any reason. It's not. He it's literally so... just fell, and they kept it in the movie. Yeah, it was so, so good. And this is post Pulp Fiction. So Samuel L. Jackson, that's the movie that really he'd been working for a long time. But Pulp Fiction was the movie that I was like, all right, now Samuel L. Jackson is going to be getting work consistent work on all kinds of movies for the rest of his life yes and this is after pulp fiction yeah because uh pulp fiction was 91 92 so more dated than pulp fiction well that is that's because it purposely uh yeah. uh puts in dated jokes in it yeah that's and we true. know it if you're 10 years old you'd be very confused about this movie totally. but i bet you'd still love it i did because look on the old bu- <laughs> on the old bugs bunny cartoons when they're doing like humphrey Car- bogart 
they're doing old movie star yeah. impersonations. I didn't know if they were. I didn't know like, oh, that's a Peter Laurie impression. Yeah, no idea. I was like, oh, that mad scientist looks funny and he talks funny. That's what I thought. Yeah. So, you know, maybe I just want to get some uh, get some retrospective love onto uh, National Lampoon's Loaded Weapon One. I'm down. Because outside of the overplayed uh, vacation movies and maybe uh, Animal House, like. What other National Lampoon movies can you even recall that you would even remotely give a fuck about? They put out a lot of like college college comedy movies and like the ni- late nineties and two thousands that yeah, I that we didn't watch any. Of I those. honestly can't think of a National Lampoon's movie. I think that Stifler kid, other than the ones I just said, one of them. Something about college, though, like you said, but not one of the ones we just said. No, no. But other yeah. than, like, The Christmas Vacation, yeah, the fa- those are National good. Lampoon movies. And Animal House is a National Lampoon movie. Yeah, and this. And this is good. And there you go. That's our our our, fa- our next awkward laughter uh, movie. National Lampoon's Loaded Weapon 1. Do you Hell remember yeah. it? Do you even remember it? Do you remember Emiliano Estevez? We should have eaten loaded potatoes while we watched Loaded Weapon. <laughs> His ass is in it. Amelia Espez's ass is in it. The only thing I remembered about this movie, the joke that I remembered, and was the reason that I wanted to play this movie, was he's at... It's not even the funniest thing. He's at Sam Jackson's house. Mm -hmm. Having dinner. And he's got the wife and kids there. And they're... Sam Jackson's daughter starts to try to play footsie with him. uh, Emilio Estevez. And then the son tries to play footsie with him. So they're rubbing on his legs with their feet. And then they have a dog. <laughs> and then you see the dog's paw, like, go in and try to, like, rub up and down on I still think that shit is just so fucking funny. <laughs> you know, not every joke hit, but there were so many jokes yeah. that it would it would have been impossible for them all to hit. It was good. But I think the most things that I was shocked about was, like, who was in the movie for such brief times. Definitely. Like, 8.2 million? No one was making over a million dollars on this movie, you know? Were they even making a half a milli on this movie? Maybe they split it between the two main guys. Man, I don't know. I don't know. So, yeah, National Lampoon's Loaded Weapon 1, directed by Gene Quintano uh, from 93. And this, the Zuckers aren't the Zuckers who did the uh, Naked Gun were not involved in this one. So this is a different farce team. We're going to rate this 1 through 5. We're going to hump it 1 through 5 times. Yep, yep. And combined for best out of 10. Mm-hmm. What would you rate National Lampoon's Loaded Weapon 1? I'm going to say 3.5. Okay. Respectable, I Yeah, think. I think it was so much fun. It's just so very dated, but that's also why it's nostalgic. Mm. But it doesn't, um, for us, because we remember that time and because we grew up on that, like, it was so funny. But it doesn't, it doesn't have staying power, really. Yeah. Unless you have a particular set of, like, history you know, particular area of watching movies. I'm going to give it a 3.75 because I, I thought it was just a little under Naked Gun for me, mm. but still very, very funny. I mean, we're already overrating this compared to how everyone has rated this movie. I, well, but I we had fun. Have a 63. That's what I We said. had fun. So you take your 3.5 of my 3.75. That mm-hmm. is a 7.25. Yes. A 7.25 is a B tier movie sense and let's see here it is our second highest oh god b tier movie Dungeons and Dragons. <laughs> yeah oh that's because i gave naked gun such a low score <laughs> so according to our system hold on you guys get to watch me type you love it i feel like you're always i'm being more harsh on things in this movie podcast than I used to be, or and show than I used to be in our documenteers podcast. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because well, I feel like I used to give everything really high scores, and now I'm like, okay, not everything is great. <laughs> because we've at this point literally rated hundreds of things. Yeah. So you would get a little, a little more, more discerning. You know more, and you discern more. But I don't think we are honestly that very discerning with no. this selection, <laughs> because no. I think if you scour the internet. We've probably rated National Lampoon's Loaded Weapon 1 higher than everyone (laughs) at a 7.25 out of 10. It's it's 0.25 over Naked Gun. It's better than Scream 6, Hotel Transylvania, 
<laughs> Cocaine Bear, Renfield, and the Super Mario Brothers movie. Uh, only Dungeons and Dragons so far beats it in B tier with only a 0.25 uh, up above it. Wow. So, yeah. And I think it makes sense, though. Dungeons and Dragons, Dungeons and Dragon, weapon, naked gun. Dungeons and Dragons is just pure fun, and we felt so the, much fun. And we felt the same thing about, yeah, same way about this. But yeah. but uh, pure fun will give you a B. So uh, we wouldn't call it exceptional pure fun, but good fun nonetheless. And uh, yeah, that beaver was funny, wasn't it? He showed up at w- the end. Wasn't too. that beaver funny? Yeah, to do the Wayne's oh, World head. The beaver. That's not my, that's not a good spoiler because. This the, we're spoiling that the worst joke was at the end, the worst one. We saw a cameo of Denise Richards before she was famous. That's right, her name she, is Denise Lee Richards. Yeah, and she's a part of the 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 girls that hang because Dennis Leary makes a cameo as well. Mm-hmm. Um, and she there she's one of a group of girls in this room, but she I believe dated Charlie Sheen, and maybe that happened during here or after here, maybe. or I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. But yeah, interesting stuff. And and as we said before, William Shatner was pretty fine, and I think he's a pretty good villain. He's a good villain for a movie like this, especially. But John Lovitz is legit funny in this movie. So <laughs> when is he not? Yeah, I think he's funny all the time. Stepmother I, isn't my stepmother's an alien. I would like to see him more nowadays. You know, I guess yeah. he's just getting older. He shows up in the Adam Sandler movies from time to time, yeah. but. Uh, but yeah, that's it. Loaded Weapon, National Lampoon's Loaded Weapon 1, 7.25 out of 10. And if anyone tells you any different, fuck them. Fuck them. And uh, we, that's not all we say to them. Death to all traitors. Death to all traitors. Death to all traitors.